The gospel lesson today is Luke 7, verses 11 through 17. Soon afterward, he went to a city called Nain, and his disciples and a great crowd went with him. As he drew near to the gate of the city, behold, a man who had died was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large crowd from the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, Do not weep. And he came and touched the bier, and the bearers stood still. And he said, Young man, I say to you, Arise. And the dead man sat up and began to speak. And he gave him to his mother. Fear seized them all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has arisen among us, and God has visited his people. And this report concerning him spread through the whole of Judea and all the surrounding country. May God bless this reading of the scripture. Would you bow your heads? Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Normally, Mother's Day is a Sunday when we see an increase in worship attendance. In the midst of all the other changes caused by the coronavirus pandemic, we will not see an increase in worship attendance on this Mother's Day because none of us will be attending worship the way we usually do. I had considered not preaching a Mother's Day sermon, but then I thought maybe we could all benefit from thinking about something other than the ever-present reminders that seem to be as much a part of this experience as the virus itself. So please bear with me as I share the following thoughts about motherhood in general and one mother in particular. I will admit that this distraction from our current situation might benefit me as much as any of you, but it is my hope that you will find not only a moment of distraction, but also a moment of inspiration from these reflections. There is a wonderful legend about God sending an angel to earth to find the most beautiful thing on earth. As you might imagine, the angel visited several places enhanced by the beauty of flowers, roses, azaleas, dogwood blossoms, blue bonnets, orchids, and tulips. The angel visited several mountainous locales, which we would expect because mountaintop encounters with God are so popular in the Bible. In this part of the country, we are not as familiar with scenic locations bordering the ocean, but the angel visited these places also. Next, the angel visited several museums of art, admiring the talent of the world's most famous painters and sculptors. Then the angel beheld the joy of a child's laughter. Finally, the angel found what he believed was the most beautiful sight on earth. It was, as you would expect me to say on Mother's Day, a bird dog pointing a covey of quail. Truthfully, you would expect me to say on Mother's Day and maybe any day of the year that the most beautiful thing on earth is a mother's love for her child. The beauty of a flower fades. Even the mountains will eventually crumble. And the smile of a child can dissolve to a frown. But a mother's love is constant, as constant as God's love for all children, as constant as God's love for each of us. If we are honest, we will admit that not all mothers love as God loves. Some mothers are cruel to their children. If you experience such cruelty, you have my sympathy. Most of us, however, were blessed by our mother's love. Most of us were blessed by our mother's strength and courage. Most of us were blessed by our mother's wisdom. One story is an example of this wisdom is the account of two men who were walking along the beach. They noticed a bottle that had been carried to shore by the tide. One man picked up the bottle and removed the cork. As you would expect in this kind of story, a genie popped out of the bottle. The genie offered a wish. 
The man said, I want to be the smartest man in the world. Presto, the wish was granted. The second man was also offered a wish, and he said, I want to be smarter than the smartest man in the world. Presto, the second man was turned into a woman. I admire all mothers. I started to say that I especially admire working mothers, those who work outside the home, but that is foolish because all mothers are working mothers. Some balance the task of working outside the home in addition to bearing the responsibility of rearing their children. Others face the challenge of never getting time for themselves as they stay at home to care for their children. I admire all of them. Our scripture lesson today reminds all mothers and those of us who are not mothers that our children are a gift from God. The story from Luke about the woman we know as the widow of Nain is strange to say the least. As Jesus approaches the village of Nain, he sees people leaving the village on the way to the cemetery. Luke tells us the man who had died was the only son of his mother. Jesus knew about being the only son. He had brothers and sisters, his mother Mary's other children, but as John tells us, he was the only son of his heavenly father. We read that the woman was a widow. In that society, it meant that when she lost her husband and only son, she had lost her security. She was alone. There was no one to care for her. Jesus had compassion on her, surely thinking of Mary and a time when she would grieve for the loss of her son. What happened next is literally nothing less than a miracle. Jesus said to the young man, get up, and he did. He got up alive. We read in the scripture that Jesus gave the young man to his mother. What a gift for this mother, for any mother, to receive the gift of a child. Can you imagine this mother running through the village shouting, He gave me my son. My son was dead, and now he's alive. It would have been similar to the father of the prodigal who said, My son was lost and found. He was dead and is alive. In addition to the son, however, Jesus also gave the mother the gift of hope. One of the best sayings I have seen anywhere was a sign in a hospital nursery that said, A baby is God's opinion that the world should go on. A baby gives us hope, but even more, God gives us hope. This hope is not looking at the world through rose-colored glasses, not false optimism. This is hope even in the face of death. It is interesting to see what some biblical commentators say about this scripture to try to explain what happened. Even a commentator as conservative as William Barclay says, perhaps this young man was just in a trance. Perhaps he wasn't really dead. Four weeks ago today, on Easter Sunday, we celebrated the resurrection of Christ. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Have we forgotten in only four weeks that God is able to bring life from death? Hope is not affected by circumstance, no matter how difficult the circumstance might be. Our hope is indeed based on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Our hope is never defeated. O death, where is thy victory? O death, where is thy sting? Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. This hope reveals the length and breadth and height and depth of God's love. This hope demonstrates the extent to which God will go, including giving his only son, to embrace each of us and the entire world in love. During this challenging time of the coronavirus pandemic and always, all mothers need to hear this message of love and hope. During this challenging time, all mothers and fathers and their children, all aunts and uncles and nieces and nephews, all of God's children need to hear the good news of a God who says, even more than a mother loves you, I love you, I love you. 
You would expect me to say this is because it is Mother's Day, but even more you would expect me to say this because it is the Lord's Day. Amen. An addendum. Following the typing of the original manuscript of this sermon, we receive the joyous news that Jesse Dale Young, the two-year-old from Salina, Oklahoma, has been found two miles from his home after being missing for over 24 hours. Is it hard to imagine the parents and grandparents of Jesse saying, Jesse was lost and found. He was seemingly dead and alive. Thanks be to God for modern-day miracles. Amen.